Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest Inside Rovers Away Days preview. The first game of 2022 coming up on Sunday, and it's a relegation six pointer. Rovers travelling to Morecambe. Look, joining me to look ahead to that one, editor of the Doncaster Free Press, Liam Hoden, and Morecambe's head of media and communications, Ryan Daly. Liam, a massive game for both teams, particularly after Morecambe's result against Crew in midweek. A real six pointer. Huge, huge. It were anyway, but obviously the, the, that really ensures that Morecambe are, are well and truly within reach of uh, uh, Rovers uh, going into this one. Um, it's it's a, a tremendous amount of pressure, it must be said, uh, on both teams going into this game. Obviously, Morecambe not on a, a great run at all. Uh, Rovers desperately trying to build a bit of momentum, obviously, and recover from that uh, setback against Sunderland the other day. Uh, so, yeah, a lot, an awful lot on this game. Do you think it'll help the players from Rovers' point of view now knowing who the manager is, that they're not sort of wondering if there's a new man watching on and, and adding a little bit more pressure. They know now that Gary McSheffrey is the man in charge, his first game as permanent manager coming up and a big chance to impress. Yeah, I think I think it's something that Gary touched on himself in, when he were talking about why he'd not really gone out and said that he wanted the job as, as much as he kind of did in private, that you do that and it puts a bit of pressure on the players. They're wanting to perform. And and I think that'd go both ways. I think they'd be wanting to perform for, for Gary to potentially get him the job. They'd also be wanting to perform to impress anybody that's looking on and uh, and potentially coming in. So they know. They know now they can just concentrate on the game. They know what sort of messages they're going to be getting from the manager. It's not going to change dramatically now over the next few months. And uh, yeah, I think they can, be, can kind of not relax, but you know, the, get on with the task at hand and know what that task is. Ryan, as a man who's obviously worked for both clubs, is this always one you look out for when the uh, when the old fixtures come out back in June? Yeah, I think me and you were straight on to each other, weren't we, about who was going to get what points and, and you proved me right in the first uh, in the first game by winning back at the keep mode. But yeah, I, I, I love, obviously I've got a lot of time for Donny. I've spent a lot of years there with yourself and Holds and the rest of the team there. So, Regardless of how this fixture comes about, I always keep an eye on Donny's results. I like to see him do well just because, like I said, I've got a lot of people who got a lot of time for there. And unfortunately, we both find ourselves in this horrendous position where League Two looks like it could be a fun bus for both of us. Hopefully, that's not the case. But no, it's a, it's a fixture I always look out for and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone on Sunday. Hmm. Morecambe had a, a decent start to the season, didn't they? Maybe find it a little bit more difficult more recently what do you sort of put that down to is it just a case of the, the level of, and you look at some of the teams in the division yeah 100 percent. i think the application of, of league one is such a different animal to what league two is i think there's a lot of changes in this squad i think there's 19 new signings from um stephen coming into the building back in june new manager as well obviously is, is not really something you see when you get promoted to a new division. You normally see a lot of the core squad sticking together and, and the manager also being in place. That wasn't the case. You had to adapt and evolve. We've done that. We started off so well and then all of a sudden it's come 360 or 180, sorry, and, and it's, it's one of the things that you, you kind of would have expected at the start of the season to, for Morgan to be in this in this position, unfortunately, and, and that is the case. Uh, I think he would have started off how we are now and maybe picked up a few results here and there that probably would have been more befitting that's not the case we find ourselves in the relegation zone firmly in a relegation battle now after missing out in midweek as you said and we just need to start picking up results sooner rather than later There's been a big reliance on Cole Stockton hasn't there as expected 16 goals this season he missed the defeat against Crew. how big a blow would it be if you were to not have him on Sunday as well? I think it just gives Everybody else, that little bit of momentum, you, you see that Cole's not on the, the team sheet. It happened against MK Dons and they ran out 4-0 winners. Happened again on Wednesday night, crew 1-2-1. I think it just gives everybody else that extra sense of, oh, the, the main man's not playing. Because you're taking 13 league goals out of, of the team then. And uh, Alex, the player who's Adam Phillips on five, he got injured as well last night. So, yeah, it's it's he is one player that we are heavily heavily reliant on. He, he reminds me very much how John Marquis was when Donny went up in that League 2 season. They're both very similar players. Get their back to goal, hold up the play, bring others into play and you take out a, a person like that who is so good at what he does and, and it's obviously a big miss. Liam, we saw how young a team Rovers had out against Sunderland the other day. 
it's only going to stay like that, isn't it, for the time being at least. You expect perhaps Galbraith maybe come back into the fold and maybe, given that Joe Dodu left the field before the end of the game, there could be a rare start for, for Omar Bogle as well. Yeah, and and to be fair to Omar, he did he did well when he came on. Uh, he said uh, on at half time the other day, you know, it provided a bit more presence. He won his headers, you know. Um, I still think he looks a little bit in that kind of raw phase that you do when you've not played any football for so long. Uh, but yeah, he's got an opportunity, and and this is it now. Gary McCheffrey coming in and bringing him back into the fold presented him with an opportunity. He's got it, you know. Will there be potential suitors for him in January? I don't know, but it could Rovers could still look to to perhaps move him on. This is a an opportunity for him now to stake a claim and go look. Whoever you bring in this month, I want to be right up there with them and competing. We've seen when he when he first signed a year ago, we saw what it, what he what he's got, and and he impressed in those first few games before he had that bit of an injury. So it would be good to to see him. But yeah, it's, it's good to see him kick on. It, it, it will be a very similar team, as you suggest. I think, fingers crossed, Ethan's kind of shook off those last few bits uh, from from COVID that have kind of hampered him a little bit. And, and he can be back in the team because he's, he's so important. And so, particularly when you're going to have a, a bit of a bit of a battle in midfield, a, a you know, very combative player, very calm head. And, and I think Rovers certainly missed him uh, against Sunderland uh, the other day. Given that Rovers have, have taken some of the opportunities against teams around them, Ryan said earlier on, obviously the reverse fixture Rovers won one nil. They've beaten Shrewsbury and Cheltenham, but then they've, they've missed slight opportunities against Crewe and against Cambridge. So there's been a bit of a mixed bag, hasn't there? This one is one where you look at it and thinking a point doesn't really help either team. No, I think this is certainly one. You know, we know that it's been a struggle away from home for Rovers and. Typically, a point on the road wouldn't be a bad thing. I'm not saying it would be a bad thing, but it won't be that great, really, in this, as you say, in this one. Rovers need to be winning games. These next two against Morecambe and Fleetwood, these certainly are the big games that uh, they've got to be winning. We saw against Shrewsbury, got that win, although they've gone on and won, won a game since and, and, and kind of put a bit more of a cushion back there. It dragged them in at that point. And, you know, again, the more teams that you can claw and get potentially get above, the better. Uh, and even though Morecambe currently find themselves in the bottom four, if Rovers can, can get above them, that would be a big psychological boost as well as giving them a bit of a platform to uh, to, to work from. Ryan, are you expecting a bit of a, a cagey affair at the, the Mazuma? Both teams, obviously, you would imagine going into it, not wanting to lose it. But as we said just there, both keen to win it and put a bit of a gap for Morecambe's point of view, or close the gap from Rovers? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head there. I don't think both teams will go into this one wanting to end up with no points at the end of it. It's something that we've seen against Fleetwood two games ago when we were here on the 18th of December, I think it was, and it was a bit of a drab nil-nil. Not really either team wanting to go out and win it because they didn't want to lose it. And it was exactly the same on Wednesday night against Crew. It just turned into a little bit of two carbon copy goals, one from us, one from them, and then a great strike for them to win it, which was obviously the difference and, and gave them the three points. I think we've really missed an opportunity with the games that we've had at home against teams that are in and around us, your fleet, would you cruise? We've only got one point out for possible six in that respect. So, yeah, I think Sunday's game is, is pivotal. I think Old is absolutely right. I think it is vital that both teams go out looking for the win because it could be season-defining in that respect. How does Morecambe's style sort of alter depending on whether you have Stockton up front or whether you don't? Because he's such a big figure, isn't he, to aim for, particularly with Rovers having a young back line as well. We, we saw he nearly got Morecambe a point at the Eco Power a few months ago, didn't he? What is he? How does him not being in the team affect the way that Morecambe would play, do you feel? I feel like that, that kind of formation has changed now when we played you guys back at the Eco Power, as it is now known. Um, we only played with one up top and with Stockton kind of being that vocal point and he had others around him such as Wes McDonald and Arthur Nahua and whoever else was it was kind of ebbing and flowing between defending and attacking in that midfield three. Um, we've got John Obika back now who's come back after a lengthy spell on the sidelines which he got an injury during pre-season so it's kind of gone to a bit of a front two with either it being a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2. And that didn't change on Wednesday night, despite Stockton not being in. John Iunga came in and, and 
essentially replaced him. So the formation, I don't think will change that much in terms of having him or not having him. Obviously, we're kind of hoping that we do have him on, on Sunday because we need the goals back. We need that little bit of a presence up top. But yeah, him and Jonah uh, or him and John Obika, whoever it might be, that I'll be alongside him. It's going to be two target men at top and try and get the ball into him and, and try and get round him as best as you can. Liam, many Rovers fans will have happy memories of the Mazuma. The last time they were there, the, the 5-1 victory, James Coppinger scoring in his 500th appearance. Anything similar to that on Sunday would, would be a big success, wouldn't it? It'd be massive. Can you imagine what a game like that would do, given the first game of Gary McSheffrey's uh, permanent tenure? I can't imagine that it, it will be like that. You know, the, the two teams are in very different places than what they were. Uh, on that occasion but hopefully a, a really happy day for Rovers and a real chance to, to start this new era as it is now uh, on a bang Ryan go on then I know you've got a foot in both camps but with your Morecambe hat on how do you see it going on Sunday it's a, it's a difficult one I, I feel like I'm less confident after Wednesday night's result against Crew. I think if we would have came out of that I wouldn't even have liked a point to be honest I wanted all three just because I feel, feel like we needed it I think it'll be in exactly the same game to what we saw here against Fleetwood. Be cagey. I'll take a scruffy one nil if, if if that was on the t- on the cards. Liam, would you like something similar, but in a, in the Rovers' favour? Yeah, again, you t- you kind of take any anything at this point, uh, but uh, as long as it's a win, um, I I'm I'm after that Shrewsbury performance in both aspects of that, and obviously it's, it's going to be a similar sort of game. I'm, I'm quite confident in, that Rovers can go. Uh, and get some, but I, like I said, I would take a, a scrappy one-nil win if uh, if that was on offer. 